Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1983 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Detroit Tigers and the Baltimore Orioles at Memorial Stadium. On the mound for the Tigers today is Tom Filer, whose record is 1-0 with a 5.27 ERA. And pitching for the Orioles today is Randy Jones, whose record is 2-2 with a 7.23 ERA. Well, the Orioles stepped up to the big time yesterday. They won uh, 2 to nothing over Detroit. Uh, El Presidente, Dennis Martinez, pitched a three-hit shutout. It was a pretty incredible performance, uh, considering how hot we were uh, as an offense. Um, to see us get uh, taken out behind the woodshed was kind of a surprise. Uh, but, you know, it's just one loss, and we move on to today's game against former Cy Young Award winner, Randy Jones. Let's go ahead and get today's game started. As always, I appreciate everyone uh, following along, like, and or subscribe to the channel. It's a nice thing to do. Uh, Tom Filer on the mound today. As you can see here, the current Oriole lineup uh, is batting 364 against him. It's only 22 plate appearances, so not a lot to go on. All of the bullpen is available for today. Let's go ahead and take a look at the lineup. It's a little bit different. Randy Jones is a lefty. So we have our lineup in there uh, versus lefties. We're going to let uh, Eddie Murray have the day off today. And also Gibby and Trammell will be out of the lineup. Solars will be in there at shortstop today. Let's do the official Tiger lineup rundown. Starting with... Lou Whitaker leading off, playing second base. Batting second, playing left field, is Ricky Henderson. Batting third in right field is Glenn Wilson. Batting cleanup, playing third base, is Mickey Hatcher. Batting fifth and playing DH is Andre Dawson. Batting sixth, playing first base, is Greg Brock. Batting 7th and catching today is Lance Parrish. Batting 8th in center field is Chet Lemon. And batting ninth, playing shortstop is Guy Solars. Let's take a look at Randy Jones here real quick. Making his 7th start on the season. 2-2 two and two with a pretty high ERA, 723. He's got 22 Ks in 37 innings. Opponents are batting 320s three against him. He's got a uh, one complete game on the year. His fastball, I mean, he hardly has a fastball. It's topped out at 86 miles an hour. Much like uh, Dave Rosema, he's a ground ball pitcher 51.3% uh, of the time. His uh, sinker is his best pitch. It's rated at 85. He's got three other pitches in his arsenal, all below average. His overall rating was, uh, is an 84. And uh, he goes to free agency uh, in 1985. He's got one of the highest contracts uh, in our sim. He, he, um, he's getting paid one and a half million a year. Uh, this is his last year in the majors in real life. 1983 was his final season. You see he played for the Mets there. And uh, if you take a look back here at his 1976 season, that is the year that he won the Cy Young Award. He went 22 and 14. In 40 starts, uh, he pitched 315 innings that year, 25 complete games, but the craziest stat of all, 93 strikeouts in 315 innings pitched. Could you imagine what Randy Johnson would do with 315 innings pitched in a season? I mean, he would have 400 strikeouts. It's incredible. So uh, there's Randy Jones for you. Let's go ahead and take a look at the defensive alignment for the Orioles today. Same as yesterday, they got gold glovers in uh, right field, third base, and center field. And here's Sweet Lou leading off against Randy Jones. Play ball! Sweet Lou strikes out swinging. This is a little bit different for Randy Jones. Uh, he's got what, 24 st uh, strikeouts now in 37 innings pitch. That's a much better ratio. So maybe he's figured something out. A magic out pitch. Run down. Here is Ricky Henderson. Henderson grounds out to first. 
two down. That's going to leave it up to Glenn Wilson. Wilson had the day off yesterday. And there's a base hit into left field. So Wilson on first for Mickey Hatcher. And Hatcher hits a slow roller in a second. And that'll do it. So we leave Wilson stranded at first base. We go to the bottom of the first. Here is the Orioles lineup rundown for today's game. Batting leadoff in left field is Alan Bannister. Batting second, playing second base is Wayne Krinchicki. Batting third and DHing is Greg Luzinski. Batting cleanup, playing first base is Jim Traber. Batting fifth, playing third base is John Castino. Batting sixth, playing shortstop is Robin Yelch. Batting seventh in right field is Ken Singleton. Batting eighth and catching today is Ray Smith. And batting ninth in center field is Rick Manning. Let's take a look at our number five starter, Tom Filer. He's making his sixth start of the season. He's 1-0 with a 527 ERA. 11 Ks. Opponents are batting 275 against him. His fastball tops out at 90 miles an hour. Uh, he is a ground ball pitcher, 47%. His fastball rated an 84, and his slider is an 80. He's got a curveball that uh, he shows once in a while. Overall, he's rated an 81. At 26 years old, he goes to arbitration next season. What did he do in his last start? Yeah, that's right. He got blued up by the uh, White Sox in uh, game one of the four-game series, and... Only managed to get uh, four and a third innings into the uh, ball game. So, uh, take a look here at the uh, Tigers' defensive alignment. We've got a, a Gold Glover in left field and a Gold Glover at second, as Murray has the day off today. And here's Alan Bannister leading off against Tom Filer. Come on, Filer walks him. This is not the way you want to start a ball game coming off a rough start. Wayne Krinchicki up next. Runner on first. Parrish threw a base runner out yesterday, and he walks back-to-back -back hitters with the bull Greg Luzinski stepping in. Right-hander batting 333 on the season. Lines it to right. Wilson makes the catch. Bannister holds it second. One down. Here's cleanup hitter Jim Traber. Traber ground ball that gets past Whitaker. Bannister scores and it's one nothing, Baltimore. Okay. Um, first and second, one down. Uh, wow, Castino is two for two with a home run in his career versus Filer, and Filer gets him to pop up. Carrying to the outfield grass, Whitaker makes the catch. No, actually, I guess that was uh, Greg Brock getting over there to make that catch. Two down for Robin Yount. And Yount hits a grounder to short. Solars makes the play. So the one run is all the Orioles can score. It's one to nothing. Heading to the top of the second. We've got Dawson, Brock, and Parrish coming up. So strikes out to lead off the second inning. This feels bad. We, I mean, I can't imagine us not scoring one run in 11 innings. Brock getting a start today. Unfortunately, against the left-hander. Flies out to center field. Two down for Lance Parrish. And Parrish grounds out to first. <clears throat> Something I was thinking about before this ballgame was uh, keeping in mind that yesterday, Dennis Martinez had a 7 ERA coming into the ball game and then pitched a shutout. Randy Jones's ERA is higher than what uh, Dennis Martinez was yesterday. So now I'm kind of concerned <laughs> that maybe we're going to get shut out again today because of uh, maybe the game trying to balance out the ERAs. Ken Singleton grounds out to third. There's one down. Here's Ray Smith. Smith, comebacker, into center field for a base hit. Second Orioles hit today. No 
number nine hitter Rick Manning. Next man up sends it deep to center field. Caught on the warning track, so deep in fact, that Smith tags and takes second. I can't imagine any situation where a catcher would tag it first and take second, but he is in scoring position for Alan Bannister. So we're going to pull the outfield in. Bannister hasn't hit a home run in years. I mean, since 1979. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that would be the shock of the year if that happened. Ground ball to third. There's Hatcher. And he tosses him out. We go to the top of the third. We have Chet Lemon, Guy Salars, and Sweet Lou do up against Randy Jones. Lemon just absolutely horrible in a Tiger uniform. Grounds out to third. I think he's only had a one game where he's had a hit. Solars surprisingly walks. Um, so we know that uh, Smith has an 84 arm. Uh, what is the percentage to steal here? It's 65. Yeah, it's just not good. Um, he doesn't have a fastball, though. It should be higher. I guess Solars is just not a stolen base guy. Let's hit and run. It's lefty on lefty, after all. So let's get somebody in motion here. Ground ball to second. That'll get Solars over. And give Ricky a shot here at tying the ball game. One for six in his career. Hey, there we go. Ricky gets this on the board. A two-run shot. Deep into right field, 419 feet. Ricky's fifth home run on the season. And the Tigers take the lead. That is exactly what we needed to see to break this cold streak we're on. Wilson, who uh, got the Tigers' first hit of the ball game, grounds out. And we go to the bottom of the third. Tigers are up a run as Krinchicki steps in against Tom Filer. And Krinchicki, who never strikes out, he's got one of the best strikeout ratios uh, in the AL. And Filer, of all people, strikes him out. One down. Here's the bull. And Filer comes back and walks him. So three walks to go with those two hits. We need to get a double play here. Here's Traber. He drove in the first run. And now he's got a, his second hit. A single in the center. Luzinski advances to second. Now, Castino does have pop. We really shouldn't pull the outfield in here. I don't think a base hit's going to score Luzinski with less than two outs. Ground ball to second. Let's turn two. Uh, you got to help out your pitcher. As Whitaker can only get the uh, lead runner at second. I'm sorry, that wasn't the lead runner, but a force at second, I suppose. So here is Robin Yount. Yount batting 320. He hasn't really hit much in our sim. Off to a good start this year. And there's a base hit into right. Yount goes the other way. Drives in a run, and it's two up. With runners at first and third. And Ken Singleton, switch hitter, batting lefty against Tom Filer. Yount was running on that play, and Parrish throws him out. That was a risky play all the way around. Great job by Parrish. We go to the top of the fourth inning. Tigers keep it tied. Hatcher leading off with a base hit that gets past... The first baseman, Traber. So the leadoff man is on. Traber, 86 rated defensively at first. That is one of the better first basemen defensively we've seen. Let's hit and run. I know you know that was coming. There's a ground ball to short from Dawson. One out. Greg Brock up. Brock batting only 167 versus lefties. He strikes out against Jones. I know it. 
He doesn't hit lefties well, but he, I mean, he's throwing it 78 miles an hour. I think a good hitter would put it in play at the very least. Speaking of the very least, there's Parrish grounding it back to the pitcher, which he did twice in yesterday's ball game. If it wasn't for Parrish's defense, I don't think we could play him right now. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Game is tied at two. Here's Ken Singleton leading off. Skying it on the infield, carrying into third base foul ground. Hatcher makes the catch. One out for Ray Smith. Smith driving it to center. Catch is made by Lamon. We could use a 1-2-3 inning right here as Rick Manning lines it to center. And Levin catches it. I thought for sure that was going to be a double to the wall. Good defense out there in center field by Chet Lemon. We go to the top of the fifth. Tigers have uh, three hits. That's all they had all day yesterday. Levin crushes it to dead center field off the wall for a double. Finally, Lemon comes through. That's the second double as a Tiger. And ninth overall. He's batting 160 in a Tigers uniform. And Guy Salars is up. This is perfect. He leads the American League at sacrifice bunts. Let's see if he can lay it down here against the guy that throws uh, pretty much junk up there. He gets it down to third base. And Lemon standing on third with one down. Can Sweet Lou drive it deep enough? Anywhere in the outfield is good. No one out there has a good arm. Oh, he takes ball four. Oh, man. Um... Henderson just crushed it. He does have a whole a three home run game this year. I, I I feel like we should hit and run. He is improved at that role, but I also think we let him take a cut because I think he should be able to stay out of the double play. Oh no, but he pops it up. Oh man, I should have hit and run. It would have stayed on the ground. That was a bad call on my part. First and third, two outs. Here's Glenn Wilson. Wilson batting 371 against left-handers, and he takes strike three looking. Oh, man, I feel like I just sunk us. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Tom Filer at 66 pitches with the top of the lineup due up. Here is Alan Bannister leading off. A comebacker to Filer, and there's one down. That was an eight pitch at bat. Next up is Wayne Krinchicki. He walks for the fourth walk on the afternoon. Will Krinchicki be going? Uh, I kind of feel like I need to almost take him out of the ball game here. But we're going to give a, you know, he's, a, he's our fifth starter. We, we got to at least let him get to the sixth inning before we uh, yank him. Oh, no. That's a bad call. As Luzinski dumps it into right center field with base hit. We're going to pull the infield in. We need to prevent this run. On the other hand, we do have a slow base runner on first. Um, no, I think we're going we're gonna to play the odds. We're going to pull the infield in. Here we go. One, two count. And he strikes out on a pitch that's low and outside. That's a good foot off the plate. That will bring up a right-hander. That's uh, John Castino. We're going to play everything straight away here. Skies it into left center field. It does fall short of the warning track as Henderson makes the catch. So good job by Filer. You show a little faith. He gets out of it. We go to the top of the sixth. With Sticky Mickey leading off. Hesher, he is in a bit of a slump right now. Rounding to short. Oh, let's take a look at the in-game stats. Almost forgot. 
Player of the game, it's easy. It's Ricky Henderson. He's got that two-run home run today. Leading the uh, American League in stolen bases, and he's got five jacks. Dawson grounds out to second. Got to start taking some pitches here, getting Randy Jones and his pitch count up. And then Brock strikes out for the second time. Not good, not good. We go to the bottom of the sixth. I think we have to let Filer get through to Smith. Uh, we'll see. He's up to 90 pitches right now. Here's Robin Yount. He's one for two on the day. Drove in a run, and there he is. Off the scoreboard <laughs> out there in right field. 489 feet. That might be the second longest home run we've seen. Oh, man. That is his fifth home run on the season. Orioles get the lead back. It's 3-2 to two now. Singleton. He flies out to right. One down. Next up is Ray Smith. Smith lines it to right field. He goes up with Taco. Two outs. And uh, we may as well let him pitch to Manning. He's had 103 pitches. There's a ground ball to second, and Lou throws him out. Orioles pitching, looking good so far this series. Tigers have managed two runs and seven hits in both in, you know, combined between both games. Here's Lance Parrish leading off. He strikes out looking. Wow. I mean, he is horrible. We have very few things to complain about this season so far, but Parrish is a major disappointment. Two down for Guy Solars. He walked his first time up, had that nice sack bunt, which we couldn't capitalize on. And here he pops up to first base foul ground, and we're going to the bottom of the seventh. That's it for Filer. Um, gosh, not a horrible performance, but those four walks and the six hits, I mean, that's ten base runners, so that is not good. We're down a run. We're going to bring in Brian Kelly. Not really the guy I want to bring in, but he needs to get some experience. This is his fourth game of the year, 0-0 with a 736 ERA. He's got three Ks and three and two-thirds innings. Opponents are batting 313 against him. Uh, he had that bad first outing, and he pitched pretty well against the Sox. So uh, maybe he's turned a little bit of a corner here. His um, endurance is 82, so he's typically a starter. And I do pro project him to uh, make the rotation next year. He's going to face Alan Bannister to lead off the bottom of the seventh. There's a ground ball to first. Brock steps on the bag, one down. Wayne Krichicki up next. He's walked twice today. Here he pops it up to third, and Hatcher drops it. Come on. It's just, what, I mean, Hatcher's just been terrible at third base. Um, I guess he's not, I mean, he's not really designed to be an everyday third baseman, so that's part of the problem. As uh, Brian Kelly strikes out Luzinski. He's going to go after Traber here. Traber flies out to right. And the Hatcher error is uh, left stranded at first. We go to the top of the eighth inning. Randy Jones at 96 pitches and uh, is just humming along. Lou Whitaker leading off. And he walks for the second time. Whitaker, not a guy that walks much. Okay, um, I feel like he's going to walk Ricky as well. Let's see. Oh, gosh, I was way off. <laughs> the comebacker to Jones. He gets Whitaker at second. Everybody in the park knows that Henderson is going. This could, You could almost say this could be the ball game right here. We have a pitcher who doesn't throw it over 80 miles an hour. And the uh, league-leading stolen base guy on first with a uh, slightly above-average catcher. Here's Glenn Wilson. 
And he does steal second base. Great job by Ricky B. Ricky. Runner in scoring position for Glenn Wilson. Wilson one for three today. He goes deep to right center field. That will get Henderson to third. Yeah, I hope so. If the catcher can tag from first to go to second, I would like to think that Henderson could make it to third. Okay, so the uh, Orioles are not messing around. They're bringing in their closer right now. It's Bruce Suter. He is the closer on this team. They also have Dan Quisenberry as their setup man. Uh, this will be the ninth game for Suter. 0-0 with a 3-12 ERA. 8K is at 8 and 2 thirds innings. Opponents are batting 226 against him. He's got five saves on the year. No blueies. Fastball tops out at 88, but that's not his best pitch. It's a splitter. Rated a 96, one of the best pitches in baseball. He's got a couple other pitches he uh, showcases occasionally. Overall, he is rated an 85. He's really in the prime of his career in, uh, at this point. Uh, and he is 30 years old, doesn't go to free agency until next season. And Mickey Hatcher is going to have to step it up here if we want to tie the ball game. He's only batting 242 this year versus right-handers. Hatcher, that's good wood on it. It will be caught at the wall in left center field, and we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Good job by Brian Kelly. Slowly bringing that ERA down. What do we have coming up here? We've got basically a bunch of righties. <clears throat> I think we're going to bring in Dave Smith. Seems like the right thing to do. You know Dave Smith. This is his 12th game. Oh, and oh, that 142 ERA. He's got 10 Ks in 12 innings. Opponents are batting 175 against him. He's got a save. Uh, he's got his fastball, which is 89 miles an hour. He's a ground ball pitcher, though. Uh, fastball's his best pitch. That sinker's pretty good, too. And we're going to pay him some big money at the end of this year. Okay. Here's uh, John Castino leading off the bottom of the eighth inning. Smith strikes him out on that curveball. Gives him old Uncle Charlie. Yount strikes out. Back-to-back -back Hayes. Smith looking good as Ken Singleton steps in. Singleton makes contact. Ground ball to first and... Brock steps on the bag. We are down to our final three outs. This is really the first time all season that I don't feel good about tying this ball game up. Yesterday, I still felt some confidence, but the way things went uh, yesterday and the way things have been today, Dawson, Brock, and Parrish do not feel good. I, I think we're probably going to pinch hit for uh, Lance Parrish. Let's give uh, Dawson a shot to start it up the inning right. There's a base hit to right. There we go. Dawson, fifth Tigers hit today. He's now one for four. Brock, oh man, we need to let him hit, but this could be a double play. He's batting 361 versus righties. We can't hit and run with him. He is not a contact hitter. He pops it up. Okay, well, that's... At least that's no damage done. So we're going to take out Parrish. And we're going to bring in Kirk Gibson to pinch hit. We love Gibby in this situation. One down, runner on first. Here's Gibson. Oh, Gibson pops it up into foul ground. Two down. Well, we're definitely not leaving it up to Chet Lemon. Lemon batting 175 on the year. We're going to let How Howard Johnson take a cut. I know we got Eddie Murray there, but we got to give Murray and Trammell days off. Gibby's just getting the day off uh, because he was left-handed. Okay, so do we steal with Dawson? That is a question, right? 70%. Man, do we try to get Dawson into scoring position or do we risk losing the game? 
You know what? We're 23 and 6. No, you know what? We don't take. <laughs> you know what? You don't know what I'm thinking. Uh, we are. Um, we're going to let them swing away. Oh, gosh, this feels bad. Here we go. 3 2 count. Ground ball to short. That'll do it. I guess we'll never know. Hey, the Tigers have their first two game losing streak as Baltimore wins 3 to 2. Shoot. Man, maybe I should have stole there. Uh, Dawson, not really a stolen base guy. There's no trades. There hasn't been any trades in a long time. Uh, well, New York does capitalize. Uh, they move up a game. They're four games back. Baltimore now five and a half back. And California lengthening their lead in the West. Let's take a look at the headlines. Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. That's from yesterday. 58,320 watch California trounce Minnesota 7 and nothing. Ron Romanick pitched a shutout. Uh, the Angels beat the Twins 7 and nothing. Struck out three Twins batters in nine innings. Uh, giving up four hits and two walks. Daryl Sconiers went two for three. Nicely done. Uh, next one up. Doug Rao. Sidelined for five months. Oh, no, he just got back. He missed all the spring training and a good portion of the first uh, month. He got two starts in, and uh, he might be done until the end of the year. Minnesota is, they've lost three of their pitchers, right? They lost, uh, they lost Frank Viola, uh, I think, for this season. We'll take a look at that momentarily here. Let's take a look at transactions. Oh, no, and another uh, veteran starter is going to be gone. Dave Steep, again, injured, out 87 days. And that'll really cook it for uh, the, the Blue Jays. I mean, their season is done. They should try to trade Steve and anybody else that's any good uh, on this ball club. Look at that, man. He's just not – he hasn't made 30 starts. That is – that's a that's a real bummer. Uh, let's take a look at Minnesota just out of the curiosity. Yeah, they've lost um, a lot of pitchers. Let's take a look at their IL. Yeah, Doug Rao, Viola, Bob Veselic got a few starts last year. And um, they got a bunch of schlubs. The schlubbiest schlubs throwing the baseball. That's too bad. All right. Let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and or subscribe to the channel. Player of the game, we're going to give it to Ricky. He had the two-run home run. Um, that'll give him five player of the games this season. Lemon did have a double. Tom Filer, he's... I mean, he really did give us a chance, but we need more than that from him. Uh, Brian Kelly, Dave Smith did their job. Uh, Randy Jones gets the win. He's not a Cy Young Award winner for nothing. He figured it out. He goes to 3-2 and two on the year. Bruce Suter shuts it down there for four outs and gets his sixth save on the season. Yout had the dong. He also got caught stealing. Okay, we're going to come back tomorrow with Game 3 of the three-game series. Tigers got to get a win on the board. Until then, everyone, have a great night.